Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are taking a look at Unit 5 Lab 2, which is based upon friction. You will see that what we were doing is we were changing the Fn and recording the frictional forces. We recorded two of them. We were looking at the FFS max, which is the blue line, and the FFK, which was the red line. And you will see that there are two different surfaces that this is reflecting. One was the felt on the whiteboard. The other one was the wood on the whiteboard. Um, so first things first, the biggest thing to walk away with, oh, there's a couple of things. Um, one of them being the frictional force, the static frictional force, is always larger than the kinetic frictional force. It takes a little bit more force in order to get a, an object moving. Once it is moving, you don't have to exactly exert as much force in order to keep it moving. And that is why the blue line has a little bit higher slope than the red line. The other one that I want you to notice, looking at this, is that felt on whiteboard has two different slopes than the wood on the whiteboard. You'll notice that the slopes are a little bit lower. And we will take a closer look at that. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to think about what the conclusions of number one, the y-intercept is, and number two, what the slope is. I want you to think about that, pause the video, think about what those two things could be representing. We're going to talk about that in just one second. So, one of the biggest conclusions you could get out of this is taking a look at the y-intercept. Notice that when you have 0 Fn, 0 Fn, you should have no frictional force. So if the table is not interacting, um, the frictional force will not be present. And I want to emphasize this fact, it is not based on Fg. You will notice that the normal force controls the frictional force. Why? Because the normal force is what the table is exerting, and um, it is not based upon the mass nor the Fg. So focus in on that normal force on, again, this is normal force um, by the table. So um, all of this, all these normal forces is by the table or whatever surface is causing that frictional force. So I want us to clue in on that. That's number one. The second one is I want us to take a look at the slope. And you will notice that the slope is a newton per newton, which is actually a, in a value that does not have a unit. And you will notice, as I mentioned before, they are for different surfaces, we will have different slopes. So FFK, change slope, or an FFS max, change slope when we change surfaces. One of the first things that I always do when I think about an object that has, n or an, a number that has no unit, one of the things that we reflect it to is a constant, kind of like pi. Pi is something that shows the relationship between circumference and diameter. Um, and it's a unitless, unitless number. It is what we call one of the constants of nature. And you will realize that is exactly what this slope represents. So when I come down here, this is actually called, the slope is actually called the coefficient of, in this case, static or kinetic friction. So we will have one coefficient of static friction, which we will represent as what they have a mu um, s, it's s standing for static. And you will see a mu is actually a u with a tail on the front. It kind of looks like an m, but I want you to draw it more like a u, so mu sub s. Um, in this case, we also have another slope on here, which we will call the coefficient of kinetic friction. This is moving friction. And you will see that this will be mu sub k, mu k. And um, these are constants of nature. Um, just to show you, I have pulled this out. This is the engineering handbook. And you will note that as you cruise through here, you will start to notice um, brass and cast iron have a coefficient of sliding friction, kinetic friction, of 0 0.3. Bronze and steel, you will see that when it is greasy, you'll see all these different types of surfaces on here. When it is greasy, you have a coefficient of 0.16. Let me just give you a better example here. Um, 
notice aluminum on aluminum has a very high dry static and sliding friction. The minute it becomes greasy, however, you will realize that that coefficient goes very low. So again, you will see that the coefficient really does depend on the surface, and the easier it is to slide, the lower the coefficient. And we can go back into our data and see that. If we were to go back on over here, you will see that um, for these pieces on over here, the wood on the whiteboard, the wood slides a lot easier than the felt, and so you will see that the slopes are a little bit lower versus the felt on the whiteboard, you will see that the slopes are a little bit higher. So um, these are for every single surface. What you guys just determined was basically two more coefficients that can go into that book. You would say felt on a whiteboard. Um, so those are what we see as the slopes. Let me just write those in here. So we have the slope of this guy is going to be mu sub s because we're talking about co um, static. And for this red line, that is talking about kinetic, so this is mu sub k. So um, kind of taking a look at this, that is our main point. And from here, we can actually get a new equation, actually two new equations. Our new equation, as always, follows y equals mx plus b. And what we can do is we can say f f k is going to be equal to um, our slope, which is mu sub k times f n. And our other equation that we can follow is f f s max um, is equal to mu sub s times f n. So these are our two new equations for friction. Um, remember that these are the coefficients. Those are dependent on the surfaces that you are working on. Thanks for listening. Watch the example video, which will help us use these equations and see how important these equations can be um, in some of our Unit 5 problems.